Okay, usually around this point, this is where I have like a snarky quip or something to say about the movie, but I don't have anything to think of and I just want to vent for a second. I'm sorry that this review is as late as it is. I know it's only been a week since the movie came out compared to like, I don't know, a month with La La Land and so forth, but in internet time, a week is basically a decade, so I'm already behind. But even still, there's good reasons for it. A, I, I had good audio equipment, right? I had really good audio equipment, and then when I was recording a session for another Josh and so so play whatever, I was with my friend Diego and we were gonna play Bully, my fucking audio equipment broke on me, and it wasn't even the microphone, it wasn't the audio recorder, it was this fucking cord. Shit. And on top of that, I did record like this review in its entirety but when i finished it up and i looked at it it looked like this it, it looked like shit so i had to go ahead and scrap everything for a little bit and i had to re-record it from the ground up so here we go all that is just taken care of now just roll the the intro voiceover clip for christ's sake Black Panther is directed and co-written by Ryan Coogler and Joe Robert Cole and stars Chadwick Boseman, Michael B. Jordan, Lupita Nyong'o, Denai Garai, Martin Freeman, Daniel Kaluuya, and Andy Serkis. I'd say pretty much everyone's name, but we'd be here all day. The film follows Prince T'Challa, played by Boseman, fresh off a of civil war, taking up the mantle as the King of Wakanda, a far off, hidden away country in Africa with vast technology and medical resources more advanced than anywhere else in the world. As he struggles to maintain respect in his regal role, a threat comes in the form of Eric Stevens, played by Michael B. Jordan, a terrorist who wants the throne of Wakanda to change the world. Those who saw my Thor Ragnarok review remember that I left the film feeling a little bit more mixed on it due to the lack of stakes in the movie. In all honesty, it was a fear I was having with most of the other Marvel movies at this point, as none of them were taking themselves as seriously as they used to. So with all that said, how does Black Panther compare? Well, for my money, this is very much a step in the right direction. I Granted, it's still a Marvel movie, but you can feel a bigger sense of creative restraint and control this time around. Firstly, I want to go ahead and praise the acting, as no one did a bad job. The ladies of Wakanda deserve a huge shout out, as they managed to evoke the same presence as the Amazons in Wonder Woman, while at the same time being even more varied in personality. With Lupita Nyong'o and Denai Garai doing surprisingly well in an action film, I did not expect that, especially from Lupita. But a huge standout is Letitia Wright as T'Challa's young sister Shuri, who handles most of the comic relief. It feels more fitting that she be the biggest proponent of the comedy in the film due to the age of her character, and she also brings a great chemistry with Chadwick Boseman to the point where I walked out of the film believing they were siblings in real life. Of course, the other actors are great too. Chadwick Boseman is just as great here as he was in Civil War, and even gets more chances to shine when he has to get emotional, which really helps with the stoicism of his character. But the surprising standouts of the film were Michael B. Jordan and Andy Serkis as Killmonger and Claw. I'll admit, going into this movie, I did get worried about how the both of them would play out. I was worried that Claw was gonna be really over the top, like Tommy Lee Jones in Batman Forever. <laughs> Blind, stupid, simple, doodah, clueless, luck. <laughs> <laughs> and likewise, that Michael B. Jordan just didn't have it in him to play a villain. He didn't sell me in the trailers. The world's gonna start over. I'ma burn it all. Surprisingly, though, they both knocked it out of the park in completely different ways. Circus is delightfully hamming it up as Claw, clearly enjoying the time that he gets away from a motion capture suit. And I honestly had a huge smile on my face and kept laughing whenever he was on screen. 
but Killmonger surprised me the most with how nuanced his character was. The character is very similar to that of Scar from The Lion King with a touch of Baron Zemo and is very well spoken with surprisingly clear and relatable motivations and is easily one of the highlights of the Marvel Cinematic Universe with some of the best quotes under his belt. As far as the writing here, well, it's surprisingly very patient in its pacing, and it's very refreshing. It's not non-stop wall-to-wall -wall action from the first act to the end, like other Marvel movies, as the movie does take a lot of time to get you more sucked into the world on display here, offering one of the best environments the Marvel Cinematic Universe has offered so far, and the tone is surprisingly very consistent. There's not really a lot of jokes in this film, if any, really, as Coogler and company opt to play much of the world and the characters straight. T'Challa isn't like Scott Lang, or Tony Stark, or Doctor Strange, or Thor. He's not just spouting out one-liners and snarky quips, he's actually very stoic and regal. It's a small thing to praise, but with every single superhero lately sounding like a Joss Whedon imitator, it's very refreshing to have a character who takes everything seriously, who actually grows with the movie. And I was genuinely surprised with how much I was invested with the political talk in this movie too. It's not ultra realistic like, uh, uh, I don't know, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. It's more like the early seasons of Game of Thrones or a James Bond movie. It's tactical reasoning, but still manages to be just fast enough where you can follow everything. And then there's the music. Ludwig Göransson does two things alone that are magical. A, going from scoring community Scoring Creed to scoring Black Panther and B making one of the best, most memorable MCU scores to date. Rob Walker said it best, the score is part Matrix, part Lion King, part R&B with some pop and African percussion. You wouldn't expect all those pieces to flow so well together, but the way Gorenson goes about crafting the music here is honestly very fascinating and creates some very memorable scores to boot. The highlights being the Wakanda theme, Killmonger's theme, the Ancestral Plane, and a King's Sunset. They're personal highlights. It's to the point where they're so stuck in my head that I still play the tracks from time to time, which hasn't happened to me with any other score in these movies. Now, I've been praising it left and right, but does the movie have flaws? I'm gonna admit, yeah, and they're very small things, but they do keep me from loving the movie a little bit more than I already do. For one thing, the CGI is really, really spotty at times, and while I can give this a pass for something like Thor Ragnarok or Guardians of the Galaxy or even Ant-Man, I really can't with this movie. And the reason why is something why the movie is so good. It's the tone. Because the movie feels more grounded for a Marvel film, that is. It makes certain moments where the CG takes over stand out even more. and. It just makes everything at a certain point feel artificial. It really comes out with the characters doing stunts. Whenever T'Challa flips and jumps around, the character never really feels like he has the same weight you could tell he had in Civil War. I, I had the same issue with Spider-Man Homecoming whenever Peter was swinging. Not only that, but I personally felt that the third act of the movie could have been I know, a tad longer to give the climax of the movie some more emotional weight for the characters, as some major things happen near the end. And while I do appreciate that the movie is a little bit more consistent in tone and gives the jokes a more of a backseat this time around, 
that doesn't mean that there's the odd one that slips out that just completely sucks you out of the movie. No spoilers. There's a point where Shuri is walking with T'Challa, and after talking about some pretty serious stuff, she suddenly goes, What are those? It doesn't happen often, and the occasional joke does land, more often than not actually, but certain moments such as that do pull you out and can be pretty groan worthy. And maybe it's just me, but at certain points, the fighting and action felt a little bit sluggish. And this shocks me the most because that was one of the things I really loved about Creed, how grounded and gritty and fast the action felt. It's only in certain moments, like this one part right here in the casino. But even still, for the most part, the action is pretty serviceable, and Rachel Morrison does a great job as the cinematographer. Now with a movie as big as this in the cultural zeitgeist, there's gonna be a lot of talk of politics and all this stuff. And I know that it's happening already as the countless thing pieces that have been going around across the internet in the past week have shown. But I wanna dispense all those politics, I wanna dispense all those talk pieces, and I just wanna ask one question. Is the movie good? Well, in my opinion, it is, and it is definitely worth the hype. Despite very few, albeit major flaws, the movie is honestly a Marvel standout, with some of the best acting, best pacing, best cinematography, best tone, and best characters. It more than earns a spot at the top in terms of the MCU movies. And in all honesty, this feels to me how others felt walking out of Captain America Winter Soldier. It's on that level. It's a 9 out of 10. For sure, go see it if you can. It's so worth it and you're not going to be disappointed. That's my review. I'm Joshua Lozano. Please like, favorite, comment, subscribe, share this video if you can, and I'll see you guys next week when we talk about the Academy Award nominees for Best Picture. Please donate to the Patreon if you can. I'm Joshua Lozano, and I'll see you guys next time.